Hello, and welcome to another live Q&A. This time is just with the Cobra Writing Life team. So really excited to be here today with Laura and Rachel to talk all things Kobo Plus and to chat about the recent expansions that we've had with Kobo Plus. So really excited to be here. We'll do a quick introduction. Um, and yeah, let us know in the comments where you're coming from. We are in, dare I say, it is spring in Toronto. Now I've cursed it and it's going to snow again. Um, but it is uh, a nice and sunny day up here in Toronto. So let us know where you're coming from. Uh, my name is Tara and I'm the director of Kobo Writing Life. Um, and I'll let my team introduce themselves. Uh, Rachel, why don't you go next? Absolutely. Um, I'm Rachel. I am an author engagement specialist or author engagement manager. It's almost like that was a recent promotion. <laughs> almost. Uh, I know my title, I swear. Um, <laughs> but yeah, with Kobo Writing Life. And I am uh, the one of the individuals who helps run all of the promotions for uh, the Kobo Writing Life team and authors. Laura? Hi, everyone. I'm the other author engagement manager, along with Rachel. Um, so I do a bunch of different things for Cobra Writing Life. One of them is social media. So I'm currently trying to get us up and running on Facebook right now. Streamer doesn't like us on Facebook, apparently. Um, and I also do a lot of different things behind the scenes, um, doing a lot of online events representing Cobra Writing Life. Um, working with authors to talk to them about how they can reach new readers on Cobra Writing Life, that kind of thing. Also do the podcast with Rachel and work on different uh, payment things as well. Nice. Um, oh, we have somebody tuning in from the Scottish Sea Coast. Thank you so much that you write cozy mystery and women's fiction. Um, I hope it is a lovely evening over there. Um, so let us know where you're coming in from and we can get going. Um, if you have any questions as well, feel free to drop them in the chat throughout and we'll try our best to get to them. Um, we have a couple of questions that we've sort of prepared where we can just chat about Kobo Plus. So if you're not sure what it is, let's get started with. So what is Kobo Plus? Um, so Kobo Plus is Kobo's non-exclusive subscription reading platform. Um, and I think the non-exclusive piece is so important for authors. Um, so it really is a place where you can opt your books in and have them available to readers all over the world that are subscribing to Kobo Plus. Um, for on the reader perspective, there's an option of Kobo Plus Read, Kobo Plus Listen, or a combined Kobo Plus Read and Listen. Um, and the prices vary where you're coming from. I think in the US, it's $7.99 to $9.99. Uh, so it's a very affordable way of people to have a kind of like all you can read option. Um, uh, yeah, on, an all you can read digital option. Um, so what would you say, Rach? Is there anything I'm missing about Kobo Plus? I don't think so. I think that covers all of it. Um, if there's one thing that I would touch on with the non-exclusive part, which I imagine we're going to get into later, but the non-exclusive uh, piece for authors um, is across the board uh, author choice. So you can opt in in some geos or territories. You can opt in for whatever time you feel fits your uh, promotion schedule. So it's very author friendly is one thing that I would emphasize. Yeah, it was definitely yeah. built with authors in mind. Sorry, Laura, go ahead. Sorry, Scout is barking over here. A bit of a dog <laughs> moment. Um, but yeah, I was just going to add to what Rachel was saying and say that uh, we really did build the couple plus back end with authors in mind. So we tried to make it as easy as possible for everyone to opt in and out, opt in with specific books or like their whole backlist. And also to um, only choose certain geos or all geos. Um, so we really have tried to make it as easy as possible. Nice. And that's a good segue into the next question, which is kind of what we're covering today about where Kobo Plus is available. Um, and because it is in so many spaces now, I actually made a map. So here is the map that shows everywhere that Kobo Plus is currently operating. So we're in 18 territories. So four of these were launched just this year. Um, so our latest territories were Hong Kong, Taiwan, Ireland, and South Africa. Um, so we're definitely well represented over the globe. Um, so we are in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, Belgium, France, Italy, Portugal, take a breath, 
Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Africa, and Ireland. So you're very well covered in terms of like English uh, centric spaces, and then also in a global area. Um, there's a lot of English readers in all of these spaces. So it's something to keep in mind when you're advertising your books in Kobo Plus. You can let your readers know that Kobo Plus is probably available in your territory um, if you didn't check it out already. And we will have more places coming soon as well that we can't quite mention. But we're really excited about being able to offer this everywhere, um, especially uh, with the kind of rate that we're that we're rolling out. I think we uh, well, we launched like the four Nordic ones last year and four this year, and we're just going to keep going. Um, in terms of like what uh, we focus on directly here, it's more so of the English language geos with Canada being Kobo's biggest market, of course, and then Australia, New Zealand, the US and the UK. Um, so when we'll talk to promotions and things like that, it will be mostly focused in those areas. But there's a huge opportunity for those other spaces, too, where we can connect you with um, uh, the team that we have on the ground there. And it kind of just goes to represent um, what we at Kobo call a kind of a globally local view of book selling where your books are available all over the world, wherever you set them to be published. Um, but we know that there is a little bit of nuance between selling books in different countries. So we do have experts on the ground in a lot of key locations. And we also have a strategic partner in a lot of different key areas as well. So um, just something to note about it being available. Um, and something that was kind of different about the launch in Hong Kong and Taiwan was that we actually localized Kobo Writing Life itself in that area. So um, authors uh, can access the Kobo Writing Life portal in both traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese. So we're really excited to see what kind of uh, content can be generated there and made available to the readers in those specific territories. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, if not, we're going to keep going. Um, I feel like it's going to be a lot of me talking, but is there anything you guys wanted to add to this? No, I was really worried you were going to quiz us on where Kobo Plus is available now because Why we made expanded it so rapidly. I was studying and prepared, but I'm grateful I didn't have to use that knowledge. Oh. Maybe Next we're going to quiz you later, Rach. Or we could not. <laughs> Um, no, the next time we'll do a sort of like pin, pin the tail on the donkey where I'll be like, put the quill on Hong Kong and see if you can figure that out. <laughs> That's what I was worried right about. Geography skills. <laughs> uh, that, I mean, that sounds fun for me, but yeah. Um, so um, another question that we get a lot is how does Kobo Plus pay? Because this is a little bit different to... Um, the way that some of the other subscription platforms work, only in the sense that we use minutes read um, versus um, kind of any other uh, kind of tracking method. So I wanted to go over in a in a very generalized way about how, as an author, you're getting paid through Kobo Plus. Um, so it is a revenue share model, um, which is very similar to a lot of the models that are available in the market. So how it works out is that we have our main metrics, which is uh, the kind of column on the left. Uh, so we have the number of subscribers that are in that specific geo and their subscription per month. And then we divide that by all of the minutes that have been consumed, both ebooks and audiobooks, uh, which is one of the reasons why we went toward minutes. Um, so when we divide our total revenue by the minutes consumed, that gives us our value per minute. And this is what's being used to kind of calculate your earnings, per, your books earnings within our Kobo Plus pool. Um, so then what we do per title is that we take the total number of minutes that your title was consumed. That's multiplied by the value per minute, which is then multiplied by 60%, which is the author takeaway. Um, and that gives you your title payout. Um, and then to just even add another column again, um, we do calculate what we call a read. Um, so a read for your book is kind of the equivalent of like th thereabouts of like a book unit sale. So we kind of calculate reads as 300 minutes. So it's like all of your consumed minutes divided by 300 give you a sort of estimate of the number of reads your books has. So that's just to sort of go over um, a little bit of the more technical financial piece here um, that I should definitely quiz Laura and Rachel on. <laughs> Uh, but no, I think you guys nailed it. So um, let us know if you have any questions about this. Um, and if not, I'm going to keep going and really wanted to highlight where you can see your Kobo Plus read. So this is something that you might be wondering as well, like your book is in Kobo Plus. How can you tell if you're getting traction at all? 
Um, and you can do this through our dashboard, which we launched last year, our Kobo Plus dashboard, which we're really, really proud of. Um, so you can see that it combines both your um, ebook reads and your audiobook listens to show you the minutes. Um, it also, we kept the Kobo Writing Life map, um, hashtag KWL map um, on uh, Twitter or X, uh, if you wanted to see examples of people that are selling globally through Kobo. Um, so your dashboard here will show you at a glance the overview of your monthly numbers. Um, it is always updated on a monthly basis just because that's when our data is coming in. Uh, so if you don't see anything for this month, actually you should see February by now is available, uh, but it's always towards the end of the following month. Um, so when you're looking for March, it'll probably be available on your dashboard around about the 21st of April. Um, so you'll be able to see that there. There's a fun graph where you can kind of see the kind of peaks and valleys with the different reads. And then you can also um, export the data as well. So you can break down on a title by title level, export it to an Excel sheet, and you're able to see all of this information. So it's a fun little visual that you can have around that. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to see your sales, you can do so on the dashboard. We also upload um, the separate Kobo Plus invoices. So you have your one monthly sales report that gets uploaded to your uh, to your account every month. And then we also have a separate invoice just for Kobo Plus. Um, so you'll find those if you go into Kobo Writing Life um, under my account and payment information there where you can download the, the kind of the actuals um, as the dashboard is always just an estimate, but it is very pretty and more visually appealing than, than downloading an Excel sheet, dare I say. Um, but yes, yeah, so I am going to, I think that is my last slide. Um, all right, so what are the benefits of Kobo Plus? I'm gonna stop talking and Laura, do you wanna talk about some of the benefits? For sure. Um, so one of the biggest benefits to Kobo Plus is just growing your overall readership at Kobo. Uh, we've really seen it to be a different audience completely um, from your regular a la carte sales and readers. Um, so it's a good way to kind of revitalize your backlist, get people reading books that maybe haven't been read recently. Um, it's also a good spot for translations as well um, and for you to get those translations read and other geos that maybe haven't gotten traction on Kobo before. Um, and also a good spot for box sets as well. We're seeing box sets to be read in Kobo in general. Kobo readers love box sets, but specifically on Kobo Plus as well, people are loving reading box sets. Nice. Rach, any benefits you want to add? Again, just going to kind of double down on the author friendliness that uh, we took into mind when um, building out Kobo Plus for our KWL authors. So uh, like we've mentioned before, there is no exclusivity. Um, you can have your titles in Kobo Plus and then also be publishing them elsewhere so long as it agrees with their terms of service. Um, you can put your books in for as little or as much time as you want. We tend to recommend trying three months uh, so you have a little bit of time to gain traction with um, Kobo Plus readers. And it's ebooks and audiobooks. So your whole catalog can go into Kobo Plus. So I would definitely keep those things in mind when making your decision to opt in. Yeah, and something to keep in mind as well. I know that AI is a real buzzword at the moment. Um, if you were a little bit curious about AI audiobooks, you can actually publish those with Kobo Writing Life. Um, if you don't see the audiobooks tab, you can just send us an email at writinglife at kobo.com and we accept those and those can also be distributed to Kobo Plus. Um, of course, with AI, the caveat being you just have to make it very clear in your metadata um, that this is kind of a, a machine read book um, just to make sure that there's no customer disappointment there. Uh, but it is just an opportunity of um, uh, giving authors the space to enter a market um, that can be kind of quite expensive if you want to go with the high level um, uh, hiring narrators, um, even though I think there is a there is a space for both of those options, but uh, you can upload audiobooks to Kobo Writing Life and put those through to uh, uh, Kobo Plus as well. Um, and if you don't see the audiobooks tab, you can also send us an email, or I just said that, the same with the promotions tab, which we will talk about in a second, uh, but you can always email the team at writinglife at Kobo.com if you have any questions about our terribly kept hidden secret features on, on Kobo. Um, 
And then also just to kind of uh, stress again, like the no time limit piece that we really built this out wanting to give authors as much control as possible um, when opting their books into Kobo Plus. Um, as Rachel said, we do recommend that you kind of try and keep your book in for a little while to gain traction, to not disappoint readers. Um, but you have the option to choose um, to opt in. You can remove at any time and you can even select the territory. So if you are a little bit hesitant about the word subscription, um, maybe you want to test it out in some of our newer markets or like the Netherlands, for example, which is where we launched Kobo Plus back in 2017. And it has a, a very good uh, solid market share there. So that might be something to, to consider. Um, but my attitude around it really is as if you're publishing widely, why wouldn't you put it everywhere that it is available? Um, I think it just is an, a great opportunity to reach a whole new audience of readers. Um, and I know actually this week I had some meetings with authors where I was looking through the books that were getting read in Kobo Plus and there was tons of book ones, book one, book two, which like really indicates to me that like this is a new reader that is is reading the first book and you can actually see the read through there as well, which is um, always very encouraging. Um, you know, there's lots of data and I like to read it in the most positive way we can. Um, all right, Rachel, I'll let you lead this one. I know we get a lot of questions about promotions for authors um, because Kobo Plus is really great to make your book available. Um, but as with the indie industry in general, there are so many books now that discoverability really is um, something that authors focus on. Um, so at Kobo Writing Life, uh, the team is dedicated to really kind of help uh, advocate for authors within the Kobo ecosystem. Um, so Rach, why don't you talk about the promotions piece? Yes, I would love to, um, because we're very excited about this, because last fall we launched our first official Kobo Plus promotion. Um, how this works, it is uh, similar to the free page, if you're familiar with that one. Um, it is for placement on the Kobo Plus subscription homepage. So if you are not a Kobo Plus subscriber and you go and click on Kobo Plus, you're going to see a page that encourages you to try out the subscription service. If you are a subscriber for Kobo Plus and you click the Kobo Plus um, button on the uh, Kobo homepage, you'll be taken to a whole different page which is filled with books for subscribers to read. And we have one of those lists and we are offering placement on that list. It is six pages or six books are selected every week. <laughs> six pages of no, books. No, I wish. <laughs> I'm working on it. That's my next point. Um, it is six titles that are selected every week. We update them every Monday, uh, unless it's a holiday here in Toronto, in which case it will be updated on Tuesday. Um, and yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, these titles are included on the list on the read uh, subscribers, the read and listen subscribers. They're included on uh, the device store for Kobo Plus readers, which is really exciting. And we are hoping to expand this for more offerings because like I mentioned, it is only six titles that are selected every week. I do my best to select six different authors as frequently as possible. So if you are applying to this promotion, please keep applying because it is highly sought after as it is currently our only Kobo Plus promotion. But I'm in, I'm working on researching and working with our Kobo Plus team to find more opportunities to bring more KWL titles to our subscribers. One thing I really like about the way that you're doing this promotion is that, um, so it is six books. And the reason it's six is because that is the number of books that are kind of will show up directly in a carousel. And we don't ever want to sort of, uh, like charge or spotlight something if the customer can't see it right away. Um, but the wonderful thing is that you're not actually removing them. You're just moving them down the carousel. Correct. Um, so for customers browsing, they could go through and browsing. So even though you're only paying for, for one week of promotion, your book still is there. Um, and I think you're seeing a little bit of a, a, a reading tale coming along yeah, with that. I was going to mention that. Um, one thing that I really want authors to keep in mind with this promotion is that it's a discoverability uh, promotion. So new readers are finding your book, but just because they find it in this promotion does not mean they were going to read it that week. So do not be discouraged if you're like, well, I was in this promotion and I didn't see a huge boost in minutes read immediately. There, are, We're seeing more titles being added to libraries and we are definitely seeing that tale of the minutes read continuing over time as readers are like, oh, I have this book in my library. Now I have time to read it. So it definitely has a long tail of both discoverability and continuing to be read afterward. 
Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I enjoy with working with authors as well is the kind of um, inventiveness um, and uh, just kind of gusto really when it comes to like trying to put their books in front of new readers. Uh, so there are a number of Kobo Plus promotions that are being author created and author driven that we're trying to support on our side. So I think perhaps the, uh, the, the largest one is the YOLO with Kobo that if you Google that, you should find uh, like a, I think it's Kobo Romance Binge uh, or something like that, where we're kind of uh, highlighting a number of titles. We've done different ones. Um, there was the Ho Ho with Kobo um, and then also a different fantasy one as well. So if you do ever have any ideas about collaborating with us in terms of promotions, um, do let us know. Um, and I know, Laura, you um, worked with authors at developing promotions before as well. Is there any kind of advice that you would give or anything about what would helpful, what would be helpful for us to have for promos? Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of our biggest promotions or most successful promotions have been born from like an author idea, just an author emailing us like, look, I have this sale idea. Can you help me support it? Um, so again, I would kind of encourage authors if they have ideas or have feedback to email us. We are a really small team and we're we try and work with authors as much as possible. Um, so feel free to reach out with your ideas. Um, and yeah, I think promotions are the most successful when it's a joint effort. So anything mm -hmm. like YOLO, like Kobo, where it's a bunch of authors who are working together to promote um, like-minded books to their audience, I think we always see the best success with those. So just make sure you're continuing to share and um, really working with your community to share these promotions as well. Yeah, and these promotions, like Rachel said, it's all about discoverability, really, and then about the kind of longer tail when books are being read. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how throughout the months um, things go. Um, I'm going to look at some questions that are coming in. There's one that is about a promo. Uh, so perhaps you could answer this one, Rachel. Oh, yes. Uh, is the, the question, is the author promo for a single title? Does this include box sets? Box sets are absolutely encouraged. Um, we like Laura has mentioned, Kobo readers love box sets and box sets in Kobo Plus, if only for the convenience of not having to go search for books, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, so box sets absolutely encouraged in this promotion. Uh, it is all genre. It is all size. Um, and yeah, that's please include your box sets. <laughs> Um, in terms of box set covers or anything like that, um, we don't have uh, like restrictions that would stop your book being published per se, uh, but we do kind of discourage the um, 3D box set with just a plain white background uh, purely because it makes your cover really, really small. Um, and uh, it kind of makes it harder for your book to stand out in an already small space. So those would probably be less less likely to be selected for merchandising opportunities, um, although you can still use them. Um, but I like to think of your box set cover almost as like an ad for your series. Um, so how can you tell that this is a bundle of books, but do it in a way that is cohesive to your brand and is also creative and try and think about, yeah, like what would you use for like a book bub or a Facebook ad or something like that. So yeah. And um, if you're struggling with ideas for your box set promo, uh, we do have an article on our help center that has a lot of really great examples of different ways to put together a box set cover um, outside of the 3D, a lot of white space cover that Tara mentioned. Uh, we have another question. Um, Rach, floor, floor is yours. <laughs> <sighs> yes. Okay. So this is a limitation of our promo tool because we want to make sure that our customers are seeing different titles. Um, we don't like both in fairness to customers and to authors, we want to try to merchandise as many different titles as, as possible. So if you are currently in a promotion with a title, you will not be able to submit to another promotion until that one is finished. That is how the tool works. I do not have the coding prowess to overcome that. So that is how it is oh, for yeah. now. However, there is one workaround that I will tell you. If you have, say that you have a book bub, um, or a free booksy or something, and you want to, let's use free, and you want to apply to the free page. And so, or you want to apply to the Kobo Plus promotion and you're already in a different promo or vice versa. Shoot us an email. Sometimes there are ways that we can work around the promo tool and help you out. Um, but 
the hard and fast rule is that when you're in one promo, you're in a promo. And once that is done, you are free to apply to more. Okay. Thank you. Um, question from Joseph, a Canadian author doing a book tour in South Africa. I mean, that sounds like the absolute dream in May and June. Do any materials or promos to introduce Cobalt Plus to South African readers? Um, uh, Rachel, Laura, would you like to chat about our social assets, perhaps? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we've done with the Cobalt Plus team is create uh, customizable social assets. Um, so Terrence, I'll get you to share that in the comments. Um, and what these assets are is basically um, just a little creative for Kobo Plus to say like my books are available in Kobo Plus and you can actually insert your book covers into the creative. Um, and those are available in different sizes for every social network. Um, and you're welcome to grab those and share them with your readers as well. So yeah, definitely those are available, Joseph, and I really encourage you to use them to share your work with everyone. And I would say as well, in terms of like materials for booksellers, distributors or anything like that, um, if just going to Kobo.com, um, when you're uh, when you're looking at it, it'll default to where you're based. So like I'll see a little Canadian flag at the top, which indicates that I'm looking at it here from Canada. Um, but if you actually click on this, you'll be able to see all of our localized stores. So you could go into the South African store and have the, I think it's just like Kobo.com slash Kobo Plus, I believe, or maybe it's Plus. Um, but anyways, you can go and see the Kobo Plus section, which will give you information about what it looks like from the reader perspective. So that might be helpful to, to share as well um, when you're on your little press junket. And that sounds awesome. Jealous of that. Um, our books in non-English language is also available for subscribers. Um, absolutely. As with Kobo Writing Life, you can publish in um, a number of different languages. Um, we support I, I, I can't remember the number, but basically any language that you would want to publish in that you can. Um, and then they're browsable on the store. So um, it really depends on like, I think the store defaults to like your preference as a reader. So uh, my default would be to see English books. But if I was in Quebec, it might default to English and French. Um, but so you can browse it in that way. Um, and we mentioned, I think, touched on translations a little bit briefly. So we are seeing um, Kobo Plus being a good means of translated books being read in different territories as well. Um, but yeah, so there's um, a number of different languages available. I am browsing through. All right, lots of thanks. Any other questions that we can go through? Um, if not, we can kind of just keep going. Um, Laura, what would you say if a, oh, let me get rid of this banner. <laughs> uh, oh, and our names are back. Um, what would you say if somebody was asking you about what kind of content works best in Kobo Plus, like the whole catalog, um, just their backlist, like um, what would your advice be for that? Uh, well, I always try and encourage the whole catalog. Um, I really do think it is a different type of reader. Um, so I would definitely encourage people to, if they're concerned about doing their new releases, try with a backlist series first, see how that goes, and then give it a couple months and look at the data and make your decision based off of that. Um, but we really are seeing it to work for for your whole catalog. Um, genre fiction is really popular as always, romance is king, um, but lots of different genres being read in general. Um, and like I mentioned before, box sets, Kobo readers love box sets. So those are always going to do well in Kobo Plus um, and serialized content, like I mentioned. So we're definitely seeing lots of great read through, like Tara mentioned. Um, so definitely make sure that your series are opted in as well. Um, and not only are Eng is English content doing well, but we're also seeing um, it to be a great spot for translations also just a way to expand your global readership as a whole. And I think one thing to keep in mind as well, if you are uh, curious about testing out Kobo Plus versus like some other subscription platforms that might not give you as much flexibility, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You could try one series here. Perhaps you have a series translated um, in Dutch. That would be amazing. That would be like our dream. Um, but if you have French <laughs> titles per se, there is a number of French speaking regions that are, have Kobo Plus at the moment. And those might do really, really well. So um, that might be something to consider how you balance several different platforms. 
Um, so yeah, I would definitely think about that. Um, and in terms of like the the books, the front list, back list too, I think when I browse some of the things, uh, like having meetings with authors, um, I'm often surprised to see some top titles from like that were first published in 2017, 2018 that are really coming to the forefront on Kobo Plus. So it just shows that there is just a whole different audience there um, that are ready to, to read your books for the first time. Um, anything to add, Rachel? I was just going to add one thing about serialized content, and that is when you are putting your series, when you are publishing your series in general, but especially with Kobo Plus readers who we find to be the most voracious readers who are trying to get through the whole series, make sure your series metadata is what we call clean, which basically means correct. Um, so make sure that all of your series titles are the same, your series numbers all line up. And if you're unsure about this, click into your series on the store, go find one of your books on the store, click your series and make sure all your books are there. If a reader is very into your series, but book four has an extra space in your series title, it is not going to link to book three and your reader's not going to be able to find it. And so we want to make it as easy as possible for readers to keep reading your books. So just make sure your series metadata is nice and crisp and clean so readers can continue to read your series. That's great advice. Yeah, no typos, because um, as as good as our machines are, they can't quite parse together uh, if there is a typo or an extra space, for instance, or if you've used an ampersand versus an and, things like that. I think it's good to, to go back and make sure that you're entering correctly. Um, we have a question. Um, oh, where did it go? I just lost it. Ah, German also possible. Yes, yes, you can publish books in German into um, Kobo Plus as well, and those will be available. Um, and then Patrick has a question around uh, how do Kobo Plus users discover books to read? Uh, that's a great question. Beside that homepage promo section that you mentioned, is there a page they see on their device with the algorithms? Um, so what we try and do at Kobo is have like um, each user's experience. We really want it to be like a store that is tailored to your preferences. Um, so when I look at the store, I don't quite see the same books that Laura might see or that Rachel would like see. Most certainly not because they make fun of me for only reading books about boats. Um, and and bodies of water and wells <laughs> and clouds and yes. clouds yeah, yeah. And tara will go off on like a little non-fiction tangent and tell us all about it yes um, the most boring content you can imagine is, is what my kobo is stacked <laughs> with um, but so yes i don't see the same um sports romance that laura is reading or uh sci-fi stuff that rachel is diving into so um but yeah, so that's to say that, so when you look at our store, it might not be, you might not see your books or, or but um, I mean, maybe you will because you'll be browsing your own books, but we like to tailor the experience. But so some of the things that Rachel is talking about in terms of promotions, the pages for subscribers are slightly different. Um, I know you touched on this a little bit, but do you want to maybe explain the differences why or what the extra carousels and things that they see? Absolutely. Um, so there are carousels that include uh, new to Kobo Plus. So if you are opting in titles for the first time, or if you're filling out our new release form, which I'm going to ask Terrence to pop into the comments, um, make sure you tell us you're in Kobo Plus, because then we can tell our Kobo Plus, Kobo Plus merchandising team to add your titles to that. Um, there's a uh, like best sellers, hot and trending books. There are carousels by genre. So if somebody is like an exclusive romance reader, they can find a bunch of romance titles. So it's similar, that's Laura. <laughs> it's similar to the uh, Kobo Plus homepage or the Kobo homepage, but only content that is in Kobo Plus. And so it's there are specific a lot of ways. to the territories as well. Yes, so yes, that as so well. there's yeah. a bunch of ways. Um, and then, of course, there is also the algorithm doing hard work in the background that we can't go into too much detail on. But there's lots of opportunities for discoverability. Um, and there's also a number of emails as well um, that are tailored uh, based on your browsing. Um, we have push notifications on our apps. So um, that would be something that I would recommend if you haven't ever read on Kobo and you're kind of curious just around what the storefront looks like, you can download our apps for free um, on iOS and Android. Um, and you can kind of just have a browse and see how it looks from a, a user perspective, maybe add a free book and check out that experience. Um, I think as an author, it's always helpful to, to see what authors are doing or, or what readers see it. So you can kind of tailor your advertising a little bit more. So yeah. Um, <laughs> So 
a question about your tattoo, Rachel, that I won't pull up. But, um, what funny. else is happening? Yeah. Um, what else will we? I'm trying to look through the questions here. Sorry, I'm terrible at, at um, multitasking today as uh, we're gearing up for a long weekend and um, gearing up for that. But so, Laura, do you have any recommendations for, for books that you're reading at the moment just to put you on the spot? Uh, what am I reading at the moment? I'm reading uh, Sarah J. Mass, uh, the oh, yeah. Crescent City series. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, I am typically just a romance reader, not as much on the fantasy side. So it is a bit more world building than I'm used to, but I'm enjoying it. Um, oh, someone asked if this will be saved to YouTube. Yes, it will be saved to YouTube. Uh, so you'll be able to rewatch later if you missed anything at the beginning. Um, thank you, Richard, for also chiming in that there will be a recording <laughs> after. Yes. Uh, Rachel, what are you reading? So not a lot. I'm actually, I just finished, this will go right along with um, Tara's genre of books. I actually just finished listening to an audiobook um, about groceries. It's called oh. The Secret Life of Groceries, and it follows the history of the grocery industry, as well as just like the industrialized food complex. So kind of how products are made, and how food goes from like the ocean to your table. Um, it was fascinating i really enjoyed it um but i haven't i'm a really bad employee i haven't really read much fiction this year or read much this year i've been very busy i'm actually reading fiction at the moment so who are we to, i know we're we're really flipping it around is it science fiction <laughs> uh no but there is sort of like a time travel -y experience to it it's inverno by cynthia zarin which i picked up because the cover looked nice which is probably the I mean I would say the main way people probably pick books but probably not the best way of picking a book uh, but it's pretty un it's pretty interesting I will say so far um so in terms of uh Kobo plus and the opportunities available is there any sort of tips that you would give to authors that we haven't covered yet Laura I think we've gone kind of pretty in-depth and everything here but um what would you say about uh authors trying to like read their stats or or anything like that um, yeah, I would say just in terms of, I know we touched on this before, um, but if you're worried about opting in your whole catalog, just again, start with a series and see how that goes. And then take a look at your, your data overall, and also make sure you're including Kobo Plus in like your newsletter and any social media ads you're doing, um, and just mentioning it to your readers as well, um, because there may be someone who, if you were, if you're new to the Kobo platform, didn't know you were in Kobo Plus before. Um, so just getting that awareness out there is helpful for sure. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to add anything, Rach? I think Laura covered it. A lot of it is just awareness and making sure your readers know that there are multiple ways to find your books within the Kobo ecosystem. And I also think something like that Tara mentioned, work with your fellow authors. Uh, find somebody who has similar books with you and do a newsletter swap being like, you like my books? Well, this author's entire catalog is available in Kobo Plus. You can read it all and you do it together, you can find new readers. So I think a lot of it is just the discoverability piece and making sure people know what Kobo Plus is and uh, how they can find your books in it. I think um, also highlighting what you were talking about earlier about the promotional piece, it's something that is kind of different with the Kobo Plus promotions is that it's every week and will always be there as well. So it's kind of a great opportunity to be able to apply. I would say kind of make sure that it's tailored to some other marketing plans that you have. Um, I think Laura mentioned this, like the most successful promotions are definitely the ones that are, are being powered by both sides, by us and Absolutely. the authors. Um, so yeah, like if it's part of your marketing plan, um, when you when you enter for a promotion, there's actually a little text field that you can use. So you can tell us about the book. So perhaps you're moving wide for the first time. Perhaps it's a, a brand new book that you want to get eyes on. You're new to Kobo Plus. Maybe it's the first time you've ever bundled a box set together. It's a new cover. There could be any number of things that you use that field for that just really help um, us kind of have your book stand out. Um, and we probably we tr try to be very fair with the authors that are being featured. So don't be dismayed um, if you're seeing uh, kind of 
uh, declines on your dashboard. It is just a sort of a, a just a, an issue of quantity. Um, I think more than anything else. Um, but know in just know that that is there available for six books a week. We're we're going to be able to add that and hopefully more soon. Yeah. And again, don't be discouraged. Just keep applying. It is six spots a week, so it's. And it's it's highly sought after. We're we're very popular. So uh, <laughs> like if you're like oh like I've never gotten this, keep applying. I am mindful of the titles that are there all the time, and I do my best. And it's also an all genre promotion, so I'm trying to be fair, making sure we have a couple romance, couple mystery thriller, and a couple science fiction fantasy, just to make sure our all of our readers are also happy. Thanks. Um... Ah, just wanted to pull up the nice comment. Thank you so much um, that you say you appreciate how Kobo treats their authors. Um, you met a Kobo wrote a book. I wonder if that was me in 2019. Who knows? That's so exciting. Um, and yes, thank you so much. And we're very excited to see the growth as well. Um, and then this is a good question. Are there Kobo conferences coming up, uh, moving to the Americas? Congrats. Uh, again, later in the year, I'd love to attend anything. Um, Laura, you have something coming up soon. Not yes. in person, but uh, not in person. A virtual one on April April sixth. Um, I'm at BookmarkCon, which is a Book Brushes online marketing conference. So I'm excited to talk to authors about Kobo writing life there. Um, Rachel and I will also be at a new conference in Toronto called Toronto Indie Author Con um, in May, um, and then in well, actually, Tara, you probably have some as well that I'm missing. I know. I feel like I should have had the list in front of me, but never mind. Um, in May, so I was just in New Orleans for the future of publishing in person, but they're doing a virtual version of this conference at the end of May. Um, so if you search for the future of publishing conference, you'll be able to look for that. Um, and then Laura, you will be virtually um, at I, the Ingress romance. Con. Oh, right. I was thinking Anger. about the down unders, but yeah. Oh, yes. Those as well. Um, but it, I'll be at Inker's Con in July. Um, and then we'll be doing uh, Romance Authors of Australia and New Zealand. Um, and then in person, uh, we'll be in Florida at Novelist Inc., Rachel and I, in September. Um, and then, Tara, you will be in November at Author Nation. Yeah, and we'll also be at Romance Author Mastermind in person yes. in Houston in October. And then there's also one other Toronto one where we'll be in person, which is the Northern Rainbows Romance Retreat, um, which I believe has people coming in from, from everywhere. So uh, there's a bunch of stuff coming up. So the easiest thing to do, I don't think we share a list anywhere, but if there's anything that you're at, um, send us an email and we can see if we're there or if we can connect. Um, always love meeting authors in person. It's one of a, mm -hmm. it's one of the great things um, to be able to chat to an author and get to know them throughout the years and see their growth, um, but also to bring the feedback back to our development team and to be able to see like this this author is um, interested in this feature and and how do we accommodate that piece? And it's good for us to learn about all these conferences and maybe keep it in mind for our planning for next year. There, yeah. There's so many that we're always finding out ones that we haven't heard of before. So it's good to hear about them. Absolutely. And we like going places and meeting people. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, so we talked a lot about the Kobo Plus promotions. Um, if anyone's not familiar about like the promotions tool in general, do you want to um, go over maybe some of the other promos that are available, um, like the free page, for instance? Absolutely. Um, we have a lot of promotions available. Um, so like Tara said, we have the free page. Uh, on the free page, we have a couple of different options for you uh, to apply to. We have... Um, our spotlights, which are uh, like a nice big spotlight on the free page. Uh, and we do one for romance. We do one for mystery thriller. We do one for uh, new to Kobo. If you are newly wide or it's a new release and it's the first time you're offering it free, great spot for you. We have one for science fiction fantasy. We have genre lists that are updated every week. We have a first in series promotion. Um, we have one for uh, books written by or about marginalized communities that we're really proud of. And we also have a rotating genre list. So this changes every month. Right now, oh, what is it's right in between months? Cozy Mysteries is coming up. Um, we're oh, it's Romanticy right now. And then Cozy Mysteries, I think, is what you're going to see on the promotions tab right now. I believe there's going to be space operas featured soon. 
Um, so that's really exciting. And then outside of free, we have uh, month-long promotions, including buy more, save more. We have promo code driven promotions. Um, the nice thing about those is there's no price matching that you have to worry about because you can submit your titles at full price. We also work with our content sales teams to be uh, involved in their promotions where your titles will be listed alongside uh, traditionally published books. Um, with uh, Canadian Mother's Day coming up, you can expect a promotion around that weekend on the promo tab soon. So we really have a lot of promotion opportunities for our authors um, that go kind of around all uh, price drop opportunities, um, different ways to discount, different genre focuses. So hopefully there is something in there that fits with your marketing scheme. Um, one thing I would mention is uh, two things, actually, I'm going to mention. One, make sure you have localized pricing set in all five major um, English territories. That's Australian, Canadian, New Zealand, uh, GBP or pounds and uh, US dollars. Make sure all those are set because you will not be able to apply to some promotions without having those set. If you have any questions about what I mean by that, just shoot us an email at writinglifeatcobo.com. There's also an article on the Help Center excuse me, talking too much, um, about optimizing your pricing. So make sure you have that set. And then also utilize that comment section uh, when you're applying for a promotion. Let us know if it's the first time you're discounting a title, if you are running concurrent promotions on other platforms, such as, like I said, BookBub, Fussy Librarian, um, anything along those lines. If you're doing a newsletter swap, let us know. The more information we have, the better, because we don't know if you don't tell us. So yeah, that's my promo tab spiel. And if you don't have the promo tab, Again, email us, writinglifeatcobo.com, and we can help you out. Nice. Thank you. Um, one thing we didn't touch on about, I know, because the focus is Kobo Plus, um, but Laura, do you want to talk a little bit about libraries and how authors can distribute to, to OverDrive? Sure. Um, so we try, again, to make it as easy as possible for authors to distribute to libraries. So it's really just a quick like switch that you're turning on in your book um, and setting a library price. And once you do those two things, your books will be sent to OverDrive and librarians have the opportunity to um, opt your books into their library. We have two um, ways that librarians can uh, find your books. And one is by, uh, now I'm like blanking on the name star. You want to help one copy, you? one user Ooh. or okay, cost one. per checkout. I know. They're, I was going to say, like, I was going to say cost per click because I've been doing so much, <laughs> so much looking at ads lately. Um, but yes, we have both of those options. Um, so we give librarians uh, two options to choose to opt your books into their catalog. Um, and something I always say, too, is to let your local libraries know about your books, um, because sometimes they'll be looking for local authors. And if um, you have people emailing you asking for a free book, you can also let your readers know to ask for their books at their library as well. Yeah, it's um, another great way of helping with like discoverability again, yes. um, especially if it's like a, um, not even just price conscious. I think people like libraries for emotional reasons. There's like a real dedication to the institute of a library and, you know, having a librarian recommending your book is probably the most valuable marketing tool that you could have as yes. an author. <laughs> Exactly. Um, we also have overdrive promotions too. Um, so those are not done through the promotions tab, but they're done by email. Um, so uh, Terrence, maybe you can link to the overdrive email sign up as well. Um, but those are a great way to get your books in front of librarians as well. And I will say I have started to include overdrive promotions on the promo tab, but you can't apply via the promo tab. So you can like see them the notification there. Of the... Yeah, you can see them there, but there'll be instructions on how to apply because we can't quite do it through the promotions tab yet. Yeah, so basically the takeaway from this is to just keep refreshing the promotions. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually really good advice. I would say that we add something new if it's not just like a new spot to apply to the Kobo Plus or the free page or our daily deals. Um, there is at least once every two weeks, there will be a new promo offering on that promo tab. So I would check weekly to make sure you don't miss out on anything. Yeah, I'm always telling authors to check weekly every couple weeks if you can't manage weekly, but there are so many promotions um, and you don't want to miss out on applying to one of them. So yeah, definitely keep an eye on that tab. 
And there's also the newsletter that tells people when the promos are going on the tab, which I kind of think is helpful too. Um, I know I've heard from authors that they put little reminders in their calendars of like, go and check the promo tool now. Um, But if you're subscribing to the newsletter, you can kind of have a little bit of a rough date around what's upcoming and really see what fits into your books. Like uh, because we rotate around the different genres and the types of promos, maybe it doesn't suit you this month and maybe you wait until the month afterwards. Um, So, yeah, there's usually something that would fit. Um, But, yeah, that, that email is very helpful, I think. Yeah. And Terrence, if you want to link the sign up to that email. Yeah. That would be great. Um, and if not, again, email us. And like uh, Tara said, I think the email really helps trying to find promotions that fit into your um, promo calendar. And like Patrick asked earlier, because you can only be in one promotion at a time, it allows you to plan ahead as to which ones you're going to apply to. Yeah, that's a great point. Yep. Um, thank you for all the great questions coming in. We're going to start to wind down, but if you don't already, um, I really encourage you to listen and subscribe to the Kobo Writing Life podcast, uh, where these two are the wonderful hosts. <laughs> they, they record every episode like that. Um, they uh, We have over 330 episodes now, I think. It's it's uh, it's really going up there. This It's over 10 years old. Tons of evergreen content that's available there. Um, and uh, lots of good episodes. So do you want to maybe, I don't know, talk about your favorite episodes so far this year and a sneak peek to what's coming up? I'm putting you guys on the spot again. Um, But if you you can think of top of mind, if not, I can continue to spiel. Yeah, I can can jump in with one that we recorded. Actually, I can do one that we recorded uh, this year. Um, I was going to say last year, but we interviewed Alison Cochran, who is a uh, queer romance writer. And I think it was a really great interview about writing um, fully developed uh, LGBTQ plus characters, but then also balancing rom-com with um, really heavy topics. Like the book that we read for this podcast was, and this is her like log line for the book, a lesbian road trip rom-com about death. So it was, if you are trying to write like emotionally weighted romances and you want some advice, this is a great episode for you. It My was visual really was, combo. went immediately to a road trip in a hearse. Like, I don't know if that was it. But that's, that's not it, but I would read that book. <laughs> that's what Laura, I thought. what about you? Like crossroads, but they're driving a hearse. Uh, you kind of stole my episode. <laughs> we we both really enjoyed that episode. It's definitely one of the top ones for sure. Um, we've had some really good ones at the end of last year. Um, we had one with Elena Armas about writing in small town sports romance. That was really good. She had lots of great insights. Um, I'm actually looking at my podcast app now because I don't want to forget anything good. Um, we also had an episode with Jay Sterling, um, Jen Sterling, which was about the realities of indie publishing and writing romance and I think it was a really good like frank honest conversation um I also think too not podcast related but take a look at our past live Q&A's that have been recorded um we had some great insights on those uh specifically we recently did a romance round table um with a few different authors and that was really awesome um so yeah take a look at those as well um, and I will say, just because I hop in from time to time on the podcast, but not all that frequent, um, but there's an interview that's coming up with Jeff Adams and uh, Michele uh, Lucini. I can't remember. Lucchini? I think it was with a hard K, right? Lucchini. Yeah. yeah. Um, that actually came about after one of these live events. Um, and that episode is really interesting because it's talking all about accessibility and how you can kind of try and improve um or just make strides to be more accessible in the books that you're producing. Um, It goes into a little bit of depth about um, how to kind of improve like your author website, even like your branding and like what colors you should consider and like basic steps around like what it means to, to kind of be thinking about accessibility. And I know there's some sort of, um, there's a lot of changes in, um, coming with the accessibility as there's laws being introduced next year. So it really is something that um, authors should be at least aware of and, and striving to try and make things as accessible as possible. Um, but yeah, I think that's one that I'm excited to, to come out. Um, and um, yeah, some nice comments about the podcast coming through. That's really awesome. And yeah, you are, guys are starting to record again. You're going to be full, full throttle. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, we had a we had a long episode um, hiatus because we had so many episodes banked. Um, so we're starting to record again next week, and I'm excited for everyone to listen to the upcoming episodes. Awesome, and thanks to Terence, who not only is um, working overtime in the in the chat here with all of the links, but also produces the podcast and uh, organizes a lot of different pieces and makes sure that it goes out um, every month. Um, and then one other thing that I wanted to plug on top of that, it actually went out this morning. Um, but if you're not subscribed to our newsletter, I really recommend that you check it out. It's called the KWL Quill. Um, and it goes out at the end of every month, usually around the same day that we do these live events. Um, and it highlights a lot of the podcasts that we just talked about. But it also just has like different industry news, um, different interviews and things like that. There is usually a focus on a specific genre, um, romanticy being like the really the, the trend word at the moment. I think we touched on that a little bit. Um, we talked about sports romance before, uh, but I definitely would uh, recommend signing up for that if, um, if that is something that interests you. Um, we do have a one last question here. I will pull this up because we still have time. Um, do we do short reads that you have some romance shorts? Um, when it comes to publishing on KWL, we don't have any like limitation in terms of uh, the size of your file, um, whether it's sh uh, like there's no like minimum length required. Um, so you certainly can can publish some shorts. Um, it actually gives you a good opportunity to then bundle those as like we do here that box sets do so well on Kobo. Um, just one thing I would keep in mind with that is that um, you have to get 300 minutes read um, for your read to be logged. Uh, so that just means that shorter titles just take a little bit longer. Um, so that wouldn't, I wouldn't discourage you from that, but we just like to make it, uh, to be upfront about that, that it can just take a little while longer to hit those 300 minutes. Uh, but that's not to say that those are not being read at all. Um, exciting. You're ex uh, excited to listen to these episodes. Um, well, yeah, thanks so much for everyone for joining. Really appreciate the engagement in the chat here. And if you're watching this after the fact, I appreciate you tuning in as well. Um, Rachel and Laura, thank you for letting me co-opt your lunch to, to chat about Kobo Plus and all the really great work that you guys do. Thank you for co-opting my lunch. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And thank yeah. you, everybody, for thank tuning you. in. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Next month, we're back with, um, we're going to be talking about tropes, all about tropes. So look out for that coming soon. Uh, we'll be going to be talking um, to Jennifer Hilt, who wrote The Trope Thesaurus um, and all these cool things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we will see you soon. Um, and thanks again for tuning in. Bye.